Hey Squishies! Back again with another vlog. This is DuckTales Season 1, Episodes 2 and 3, uh, The Great Time Chase, and Day Trip of Doom. Uh, so, right off the bat, I am definitely continuing to enjoy this show. It is a very worthy successor. Um, pretty much everything I liked about the pilots, pilot is continuing in the new episodes. Um, yeah, so let's dive in. Uh, the Great Dime Chase uh, is split to two parallel storylines, uh, which is, of course, very common. We've talked about it before. It's got the A and the B story, uh, which only intersect very briefly, but basically... Uh, you've got Dewey and Webby investigating the mystery of the triplet's mom, Della Duck. And you've got, uh, Louie, sorry, I had to run through them in my head for a moment, remember which is which, Louie and Scrooge, uh, at the money bin and Louis's adventure chasing after what he thinks is the number one dime. And I notice with some interest, I don't think they ever refer to it as Lucky Dime. I'm pretty sure they just called it number one dime, uh, which is interesting because I know that some of the comics writers, uh, Don Rosa in particular, really disliked referring to it as the Lucky Dime because it implied that Scrooge's fortune was founded on luck as opposed to hard work. Which, I mean, obviously it was because all fortunes are founded on luck. Um, but the mythos of Scrooge is all about, you know, the self-made man, that libertarian fantasy of the person who works hard and is virtuous and therefore succeeds, and if you work hard and are virtuous, you will too, despite the fact that the people who already succeeded have a strong vested interest in making sure you don't. Um, yeah. Um, that remains, as always, the one element of DuckTales that much as I love it, can never completely get past, is the degree to which Scrooge is this self-made man fantasy that has never existed, could never exist, makes no sense. Um, but that aside, it's a great episode. It's really fun. Uh, Louis spends the whole thing chasing after the dime, uh, getting into one comedic bit of nonsense after the other. You know, it's a common uh, cartoon thing. Mostly cartoons. Very rarely live action stuff will do it. But usually it's a cartoon thing of the character chasing an object or a animal or a small child through this sequence of hazards and through their own bad luck it keeps getting worse and worse for them and finally uh, at the end it's effectively a shaggy dog story. They didn't have to go to all that effort whatsoever or the effort they went through is somehow negated. Uh, the Mindy and Buttons segments of Animaniacs, for example, are built entirely on that concept. Uh, so... That was solidly constructed. My favorite thing about that storyline was what they're doing with Gyro. Uh, Gyro Gearloose is, was, of course, a recurring character in the old show, and very different. Pretty much the only thing they have in common is inventor whose inventions frequently go awry. Which, even then, like, most of the time, Gyro's inventions worked fine. It's just that what they did had unforeseen consequences. You know, he made a time machine and it worked, but then they got stranded. You know, that kind of thing. 
Um, here, here he's very much the modern idea of the nerd mixed with the really old concept of the mad scientist. What I mean by that is, like, if you go back to, like, the 80s, if you go back to the old gyro, um, the nerd is, which is what he was, is depicted as kind of a nebbish. You know, he's well-meaning, but not sophisticated, not socially adept, very unlikely to ever actually succeed, um, very intelligent, but has a hard time making himself understood, is frequently misunderstood and looked down upon. Uh, yeah, well-meaning, misunderstood, eccentric, uh, sometimes exploited, sometimes dismissed, but never truly engaged with because he lacks the social skills to get people to engage with him. That's not the new gyro. The new gyro has taken that and mixed it with the old idea of the mad scientist and created this seething bundle of resentment that is the modern nerd, let's face it. Because nowadays, nerds, geeks, whatever you want to call them, nothing to do with intelligence or eccentricity or anything. They're fans who harass creators on the internet. That's what geek culture has become. Uh, idiots on the internet harassing people. Um, so that's what we get here, is this seething, resentful person whose inventions, like he says only half of them go evil, the other half are misunderstood. But then on his notepad, when Lil Bub goes evil, he's like, no, he's not misunderstood. He moves him to the evil column, and in his notebook we can see everything started out in the good column, got crossed out, and got put in the evil column. Even the time tub, which is a reference to the time machine I was talking about in the uh, old show, even the time tub became sentient and turned evil, according to that brief shot of his notebook. So... He's lying about them being misunderstood. He, they're evil and he knows it. And let's face it, they're turning evil because they're being created by a guy who's incredibly resentful of where he is in life. You know, he feels that people should be listening to him. Um, I love the bit with the cards, even if it was totally lifted off of Doctor Who. Um, but... The bit where he like he needs, you know, cue cards on how to interact with human beings, but it's not because he's too smart or anything like that. It's really down to him just being resentful and demanding and not wanting to explain himself and not saying why he should have to. That's his problem. And then. You know, we see that reflected at the end when he realizes that little bub has just gone literally mad with power. You know, he has too high wattage of a bulb and it's caused him to turn evil. Um, that's basically what's going on here. Jero thinks that because he's got a high watt bulb, he should have the power. And so he's resentful. He doesn't realize that he's entitled to shit regardless of his brain, you know? Because um, that's life. Um, yeah, that was basically what I liked on, on that side of the episode. That was a lot of fun. And then also the completely ridiculous stuff with the archivist was great. Um, I love, love the bit where they ask how much of what she's doing is actually trials to access the hidden knowledge and how much is them having to do her work for her. And she, like, calls back in, like, that spooky, mystical voice about 50%. Um, 
Um, so yeah, uh, we got a little more about the Spear of Selene from that, uh, that Della took it, and her dog says sorry. Um, obviously she, although they jumped to the conclusion that she betrayed Scrooge, I don't see how that can be, because then why would he build this shrine to her hidden in his archive? Um, I think it's much more likely that she felt she had to do something that he didn't want her to do, and that it went wrong. Mm. And Donald is, like we saw in the pilot, Donald is clearly resentful over this. Uh, whatever it is that happened, he's blaming, he blames Scrooge for it. Um, Scrooge may well be at fault for it. We don't know. So yeah, uh, that was episode two. It was really good. Episode three was a lot of fun as well, but I felt not quite as good as the second one. Um, I, I did enjoy it. It was a good way to reintroduce the Beagle Boys uh, as the kids go take Webby to Funzo. I love Webby, I, which is not a sentence I ever thought I would utter because she really is kind of insufferable in the old cartoon. Um, but I love what they've done with her in this one. Uh, she's another character who's extremely eccentric and doesn't fit in, and she doesn't let that stop her. She doesn't turn resentful. She tries harder. And the boys see that and respond to it. How, how about that? I mean, you know, maybe you could learn something from that, Jairo. Um, and this rivalry between Beakley and Donald that turns into, you know, kind of grudging respect after uh, they fight the Beagle Boys. Always great. I, I always enjoy that kind of character arc of the characters who are both individually likable but can't stand each other, and then they have to deal with some problem together and grow, if not to like each other, at least to acknowledge that the other one has some positive qualities. Um, yeah, well, that was really good. I thought I would die laughing when uh, Donald is messing around with the boat and Mrs. Beakley is watching through the window and drinking tea. She just says that duck is going to get himself killed. And then she gets this little smirk and I lost it. That was, that smirk was hilarious. The line delivery was perfect. Um, it was really good. Also, just in general, the gag of like all the canisters of fuel falling over and Donald going nuts trying to put them out was great. Uh, Mrs. Beakley was a spy. That was kind of obvious. Um, she's basically been rewritten as Alfred from Batman, which is a perfect way to rewrite her and kind of explains why Duckworth isn't in the show because she's really kind of taken over that role. And so like Alfred from Batman, or at least Batman the Animated Series, uh, she's a former spy who is now essentially working as a superhero's housekeeper. Just like Alfred. Uh, that in turn kind of makes Webby an Urzat's Batgirl, if you go by the weird Batman and Robin version of Batgirl anyway. Um, I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, that's a pretty good fit, actually. Given her fighting skills and proclivity for uh, traps and gadgets. It actually fits pretty well. 
which will make it interesting if the hints the creators have been dropping about Darkwing Duck eventually showing up if he shows up because he's got a significant amount of Batman in his DNA. You know, he's got a lot of other, uh, you know, cape and trench coat type heroes uh, built into him, but Batman is a pretty big one. Mm. Yeah. Overall, two more fun, solid episodes. This show is off to a really great start, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. Hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want some more videos right away, you can hop over to my Patreon and see them there. Got other goodies there, blog posts, ability to commission videos. Feel free to check it out. Bye.